Hi guys, and welcome to what I hope will be a short video about the Mahalanobis distance. Uh, pardon my pronunciation. We're going to start with Euclidean distance in two dimension. Everything here will be in two dimension, but can be generalized to higher dimension. So I'm assuming you're all familiar with Euclidean distance. And suppose I want to look at all the points which are exactly uh, one unit away from the origin. So how do I do this? I uh, calculate this thing over here. And this is the distance uh, for any point x, y in the 2D plane. And I set it equal to 1. And then I get this equation. And the shape that I get is a circle. So every point, uh, every point on the circle is exactly uh, one distance, one unit away from the origin. Okay, and if I, wa if I want to write it in vector form, then suppose x is my vector, I can just take x transpose x, and that will give me the square distance, right? And if I want the distance to be 1, just for simplicity, then I set it up equal to 1. And for reasons that will become clear later, let's write this as x transpose i, the identity matrix transpose i x. Okay, so i transpose i is i, and i times anything here is just the vector itself. And so we get that this is equal to this. Okay, now what if I don't want to measure the distance uh, from or to the origin, but to some other point? Yeah, let's say I want to measure uh, the distance to this point. Uh, so I will get a unit circle if I want it to be one uh, centered on this point over here. Yeah? This should be the center of the circle, something like this. Okay, so how do I do this? Well, the distance is just a square root. Uh, I take the x and I uh, subtract from it the x value of mu, which I denoted here mu1. I square this, I take the y, I uh, subtract from this the second element of mu, which I denoted mu2. I square this, and then I take the square root of the sum. And if I want that the distance will be only 1, I, um, I set it equal to 1. And I can, again, take the squared distance and get this thing over here. And how would I write this in vector form? Well, it's just x minus mu, the vector x minus the vector mu, transpose x minus mu. And again, for reasons that will come right over here, let's write it as i transpose i. So all the x's and y's that are exactly um, uh, correspond to this equation that fulfills this equality, uh, and let's say this is our mu, will be all these little points yeah, that are exactly one from mu, supposedly. And I'm sorry for my drawing. OK, so this was the first step. Now let's talk about linear transformation. So suppose I want to move to another coordinate system by applying linear transformation. The only thing I need to change is that instead of i, I can write uh, a, some other matrix. OK, so I can change the i to a, and then I get x minus mu transpose a transpose a x minus mu. Sorry, this oh, should be a. What am I doing? I'm transforming this vector by multiplying it by a, and I'm also doing this here. And then I'm taking the transformed vector and I'm uh, taking the dot product of it with itself. And this is what gives me the Euclidean distance in that other coordinate system, in that other space. So suppose, for example, that a is equal to this matrix over here, which is just two times the identity matrix then this will be equal to 4 right? times this. And now I want that in the new system, it will be equal to 1. So this means that in my regular system, uh, the square distance is equal to a quarter, which means that the distance is equal to half. OK, so what it means, it means that if I want, if I have some center, yeah, mu, and before in the old system, I could have taken this circle whose distance is one, 
then if I want that in the new system, the distance will be one, I have to take in this system uh, a distance of half, okay? Similarly, if I take this matrix, okay, which is just half I, then I will get that in the new system, this is what I will get. And if I want in the new system that it will be equal to one, it means that in this system, the square distance will be equal to four, which means that the distance will be equal to two. So here it means I have to take now a distance of two, okay, here, so that in the new system, it will be a distance of one, okay? So as you might've noticed, if I take A to be some constant time, the identity matrix, I still get a circle. I just get a smaller circle or a bigger circle, but I'm still left with a circle. Well, what happens if I take a diagonal matrix, which is not necessarily uh, a constant time, the identity matrix, well, then A transpose A becomes this, and then X transpose A T A X, let's say that we are looking at the origin, and so we drop the mu's, will be equal to this, and this shape defines an ellipsoid, okay? And here I'm drawing for the case that A is equal to 2 and B is equal to 3, okay? So if you take A to be um, a diagonal matrix, you get an ellipsoid, which is axis aligned. Okay, so what it means, it means that the principal direction in this 2D case, we have this direction, yeah? We have this direction and this direction. They are both at the, X, at the two axes of our coordinate system. Now, what happens if A is a non-diagonal matrix? Well, here we get something a bit more interesting. What we get is an ellipsoid, which is not axis aligned. So in this example, I took A to be one half, half one. And then if I take A transpose A, this is the matrix. And what I get is this ellipsoid, which is this time not axis aligned. Yeah, if I look at X, T, A, T, A, X. So again, the origin is the center. This is our mu, but it doesn't matter. We could have also shifted the mu to somewhere else. Um, so you can see that now we have, this is one principle. Uh, direction and this is another okay and well the eigenvectors of this matrix okay ata are actually giving us the main directions okay so the eigenvectors are one one which is exactly um this uh, direction and minus one one which is exactly this direction okay so this is what gives us the directions and the eigenvalues for this matrix are, turns out nine over four and one over four. Yeah, so this is the eigenvalue for this vector is nine over four. And the eigenvalue for this vector is one over four. And it turns out that the lengths, okay, the length from here to here, or from here to here is actually one over uh, the eigenvalues. So the length here is this is exactly um, four ninths, and the length from here to here is exactly four. Okay, and you can see this by the numbers that I put here. Okay, this is square root of two and minus square root of two. And if you take uh, by Pythagoras theorem, you get that this is four, and this is, if I'm not mistaken, a square root of two ninths twice, and if you take by Pythagoras theorem this, you will get four ninths, okay? And well, that's it. This is actually the Mahalanobis distance, uh, but what does it mean? Well, it means that in this new coordinate system, okay, if you walk along this ellipsoid, okay, if I'm here or if I'm here or if I'm here or if I'm here, then in the new coordinate system, I'm exactly one distance, one unit away from the origin, from, yeah, from the center, which could be mu, yeah, but in this case, it's the origin, okay? And obviously, this is not true for this coordinate system, right? Because you can see that the distance from here is just four ninth, and the distance to here is four. So, and these are two points on the exact same ellipsoid. So in this coordinate system, it's absolutely wrong, but moving to the new coordinate system, this entire ellipsoid is a, is a circle, okay? So in the new coordinate system, this 
uh, ellipsoid is exactly one uh, unit away from the origin or from the center. Okay, so if we walk along the ellipse, we have exactly constant distance from the center. And if we take a smaller ellipse, then we'll be in a, in a constant distance, it's just a smaller distance instead of one, it might be half. And if we take a bigger ellipse, then again, it's the same distance, but maybe one and a half. Okay, so this is just talking about normal um, points in space. Okay, but the Mahala Mahalanobis distance is actually defined on distributions. It's defined as distance to and from distributions. So instead of talking of points, suppose now I want to talk about distributions. For example, I want to talk about random variables, uh, either the theoretic ones where I actually have a random variable or some data where I have some empirical realization of random variables. Okay, so the only difference is that instead of some arbitrary A matrix, I'm taking A that is related to my distribution. Specifically, I'm going to take A to be the covariance matrix, either of my random variable or of my data, to the power of minus half. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, take my, cover my covariance matrix, and this is also usually denoted by large sigma, and I'm going to take the inverse of this, and then I'm going to take the square root of it. Okay, so the inverse of the square root of the covariance matrix. Why can we even do this? How do we know that we can take the inverse, that it even exists, and that we can take the square root of the matrix? Well, the, since it's a covariance matrix, it's positive definite. Well, technically positive semi-definite, but for all practical purposes, it's positive definite. If we have a point there, which is eigenvalue zero, it means we could have thrown this uh, variable away. Okay, so since it's a positive definite, we can take the inverse of it. Since it's symmetric and positive definite, then its eigenvalues are all positive. And so the eigenvalues of its inverse are just one over the eigenvalues and they are still positive. And so we can take the square root of it. Okay, so what will be A transpose A? It will just be a sigma to the power of minus one. So just inverse sigma. And this will be our Mahalanobis distance. Okay, and this is exactly what we've seen before. On each, instead of A transpose A, we have this sigma matrix, this covariance matrix, and mu wouldn't, is not just some random point, it's the mean of our distribution, it's the mean of x. Okay, so note that when you're taking the inverse or the square root, the eigenvector stays the same, so it doesn't matter that, uh, that I'm using this, okay, what I want to say is that the eigenvectors of sigma are exactly the eigenvectors of A, Okay, so we could just talk about the eigenvectors of sigma instead. And also note that the eigenvalues of inverse matrix are one over the eigenvalues of matrix. And the eigenvalues of square root are actually the square root of the eigenvalues. So uh, long story short, instead of talking about the eigenvalues of A and take the inverse of them, we can just talk about the eigenvalues of sigma and take the square root of them. Okay, so instead of talking about A, we are now talking strictly about sigma, and the main directions of the ellipsoid will be the eigenvectors of the sigma, and the lengths of those directions will be the eigenvalues of those sigmas squared rooted. Okay, and note that what we are actually also doing is that we are kind of standardizing our random variable. Okay, so what we have here, we have x minus mu, so that takes away the, the mean, that shifts the distribution to the, where the mean is at the zero. And if we break this down, yeah, to the sigma minus half, sigma minus half, and we look only at the sigma minus half, the first one, then um, we have x minus mu uh, transpose sigma minus half, okay? And so this, again, gets rid of the mean and gives us a mean of zero. And when we multiply by this, what we're doing, when it goes into the variance, it becomes doubled. So it becomes just sigma minus one. 
and then it cancels out with the sigma and we are just left with the identity matrix. So by, if we define Z to be this variable, then the mean of Z is zero and the variance of Z is I. So we decorrelated all the um, interaction between the different elements in our vector and between the different variables in our vector. And in this new space that we are now in, then we are just, well, standardized. We, we are centered on the, at the origin and the variance is circular, okay? It's, it's circular. And so in this space, we can just go back to using regular Euclidean distance. Okay, and how is all this related to multivariate normal distribution? Well, you may, this may look familiar to you because this is exactly uh, or almost the exponent in the multivariate normal distribution. If we denote this by delta squared, okay, the Mahalanobis distance, what will happen if I take e to the power of minus half of this? Well, exactly what will happen in one dimension. The further I am away from the center, yeah, the, the, long, the bigger the distance, the lower number I will get, right? So the further I am away from this, this center, from this origin, I will get a long, bigger distance. And then I will get e to the power of minus half of this distance, of this square distance, will give me uh, a lower number. And if I want to turn this into probability, I just have to normalize by the integral of this, the double integral in 2D and the multiple integral in multivariate normal distribution which turns out to be this, where D is the number of dimensions we have. So we arrive at the multivariate normal distribution, which is just this thing over here. And you can see this is just the uh, squared Mahalanobis distance. Okay, so again, all this means is that if we have this kind of uh, uh, 2D normal distribution, then the contour plots here give us this Mahalanobis distance, where along this contour, you are exactly the same distance away from the origin. Even though here it looks like an ellipsoid, in this other coordinate system, it's actually a circle. And this kind of explains why if we have a point here and the same amount of distance, yeah, let's, this is the same amount of distance from here, we will say that this point is actually closer than this point because um, to get to here, I still have to go a few more rings Okay, whereas to here I had to go less rings. Okay, so I hope this gives you some insight about this distance and how you can use it. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.